When I first thought about the summer school, one of the things I wanted to do was to give students an opportunity to engage problems directly. So I'm very interested in the principle of challenge-driven education, where you learn through bringing together multiple disciplines to address a particular challenge. So when you think about that kind of approach, what you're looking for is an artic some kind of articulation of a challenge and what could be better than the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Because when you think about it, that is the only globally accepted framework that really lays out, I think, beautifully what challenges humanity must meet if we're going to continue to thrive going into the future. So since I wanted students to tackle problems in a very specific location, but in the context of a broader framework that would have global relevance, using the SDGs as the framework made the most sense to me. So the model of our summer school is that we take eight weeks in the summer and we combine students both from different institutions and with different expertise, but using Paris itself as a laboratory for their explorations. And so some of the key principles was that we wanted the student groups to actually represent a multiplicity of different fields. So we have students that are life scientists, students that are computer scientists, engineers, but also, for example, from Sciences Po, we have students focused on public policy and urban studies. From Paris Descartes, we have biologists. And from the Center for Research and Interdisciplinarity, the CRI, we have students that are focused on, for example, engineering, on making, on a whole variety of other fields as well. So we wanted a situation where the students work in teams, but we built each team so that they are multicultural, in that you have American students, you have French students, you have international students, but at the same time, each team represents a diversity of different fields. Because one of the principles we also wanted to apply was the notion of team-based kinds of design thinking. How do you take advantage of multiple disciplines and perspectives in the context of a team to come together around a new idea, to be creative, to have some kind of innovation that you develop and then you test in a rigorous way. So the idea was to create this team-based, deeply interdisciplinary, deeply multicultural kind of environment and then connect that as solidly as possible with the city of Paris. Because this is the laboratory, you need to understand your laboratory deeply. And so that's where the connection with local government and with NGOs and community groups is another truly essential part of the program. My colleagues and I thought about this summer school for over a year. And during that time, we thought a lot about, first of all, how can we get credit for this? And so the Harvard Summer School represented a perfect opportunity because we wanted a focused period of time, but we wanted Harvard credit for it. And so the summer school is able to do that. So doing this in the context of a study abroad program from Harvard made a lot of sense from that perspective. Then we had to think about location. And so we wanted a place where local government is particularly engaged with the notion of smart city planning, with innovation, with creativity. And I have to say that Paris is way ahead of many cities in the world in terms of being so engaged with the SDGs, with issues of sustainability, with climate. When you add to that the fact that Paris is a very complex city, very beautiful, in many ways a museum city, but at the same time, a city that is moving and struggling with issues that many cities are in the 21st century, it seemed like the perfect location for this to happen. But the final piece were partners. So you can have your local sort of situation, you can have your location figured out, but you need local partners that share your vision and that want to work with you to create something that is connected with place very specifically. And that's where having the Cree and Sciences Po and Paris Descartes was absolutely essential um, together with the city of Paris. So that combination was perfect for the summer program. Yeah. Yes, you have to have excellent partners and partners that are committed to a vision for what the program can really do and that really want to work with you on something that is quite different from the typical 
kind of pedagogy in a summer program, for example. Yes. So the, the principle of evaluation is very important to us. And when you think about what the summer school does, there are actually two products of the summer school. There are the design plans from the students. That's one sort of critical product. And then the students themselves are a product as well. And so we have set up an evaluation program to really look at both of those products. So as far as the design plans go, we have already over time, over the four years of the program, um, developed more of an evaluation rubric around how rigorous the design plans are in terms of the strategy for steps to kinds of implementation, how deeply do they engage Paris itself, how deeply do they engage really what else has done, but very importantly, to what degree do they connect internationally with other efforts? Like, are there ways in which they're part of competitions that can win awards, that can give sort of greater attention to what they're doing, but also are they having a chance to continue with other students, with NGOs, with other kinds of organizations. So we're gradually over time seeing more and more of the projects actually continuing past the summer school, which is one metric for success that we're looking at very closely. As far as the students are concerned, we have set up an evaluation plan that looks at a variety of things. One of the things we look at is that because the program is interdisciplinary, does it change a student's view of what she or he might do afterwards? Do they rethink what they're doing when they go back to the university? Do they take a variety of courses that are more outside of, if you will, the traditional pathway of what they're doing? Are they doing things that prior to the program they would never thought of um, before? And also, in what way are they applying in other courses but frankly, in their academic lives, the skills that they learned in terms of creativity, in terms of innovation, in terms of team-based learning. So what we're doing is we're looking at the pattern of courses and majors that students do after the program. We're also doing a series of focus groups every single year to see more longitudinally how are students using the skills that they learned. So we have this combination of quantitative data and qualitative data to understand does the program have a transformative effect on the students and what are the metrics for realizing that. The platform is called Lab Exchange and I view it as the next evolutionary step in the Open edX platform. So with Open edX, it is the largest MOOC platform that's open source in the world. And one of the things I was very committed to was the idea that whatever platform we, we design or build, it has to be something that is open source, so that that would maximize the breadth of impact that the platform could have. So what Lab Exchange does is that it takes what we know about having MOOCs online, it takes what we know about using video, using kinds of assessment in the context of an online course, but it takes all of those assets and it unbundles them mm -hmm. so that for the first time now, a learner or a teacher can pick and choose what assets from multiple online courses they're interested in and they can drop them into a new sequence of their own design. They can then add in their own material and let's say you want to learn about some aspect of clean water right, in the context of a rural village. You can really put together resources from Harvard, from TU Delft, from the Cree, from Sciences Po, put those together into a new sequence of your own design, add your own material to it, and then that mini course, what we're calling a pathway, is something that you can then share. If you're a teacher, you can share that with your students. If you are a student, you can share it with your class, your best friends, your family, whomever you want, so that you can share not just your ideas, but what you learned to create those ideas. That's what Lab Exchange really allows you to do for the first time. So in terms of sustainable development, what this allows us to do is to have a common platform where the universe, the large amounts of open educational resources can be adapted and remixed like, like never before coupled with the fact that you can share them through your profile, you can have groups of people come together 
create common materials around a specific problem, and then based on profiles and groups, you can then search and find people in the world that are doing something related to what you're interested in, and you have the possibility of connecting with them. So our hope is that Lab Exchange will not only make learning much more multidirectional, it's not about I'm the source of knowledge and I transmit that to you. It's more about I have shared something online, you use it and adapt it, you add your own material and you share that with me as well and with the world. So the idea is that learning fundamentally, especially when it comes to global challenges, requires the input of perspective, case studies, context from all over the world. And right now, our entire online educational system is a broadcast system.